the the premises that you're working on in terms of uh, you say this election was rigged. How so? Well, the Constitution is rigged. You know, um, the, the uh, of course, everybody knows that Hillary Clinton is now won by uh, close to three million votes. Um, this is the second time that the Republicans have put in a, a minority president. The first time uh, George Bush uh, in the last 15 years. The first time George Bush, we had the worst president in our lifetime, and now we're going to get again uh, somebody even worse. Uh, it, it's not just that the electoral college is rigged; the Senate is rigged. You know, in North Dakota, South Dakota, they have the same voting power as the state of California. 500,000 people in Wyoming have the same power as voting power as the, the people in California. That's worse than the electoral college, and the House is rigged because of partisan gerrymandering and you have situations where uh you know the majority of the votes cast for congress in a state like pennsylvania might be democratic but uh, uh it's uh, two-thirds of the congressional delegation is republican <clears throat> and the supreme court is rigged because the people who are elected in this rigged system appoint the supreme court uh and the Supreme Court is also rigged in the fact that these justices stay on for years and years and years and years with no uh, retirement date. So there's no uh, regular turnover that reflects where the country is going. Um, the whole system is rigged. And my, it's one of the frustrations I've had as a lawyer, in, and that is really what I do, I would say, 99% of the time, not write books. It, it, it's every aspect of, of, of causes that our offices has been has brought over the years have been blocked in one way or another by the fact that we don't have majority rule in the United States. We don't have one person, one vote. We don't have an accurate reflection of popular will. And, and that's what we should say. I mean, what, for whom is it rigged? I mean, it obviously wasn't set up for Republicans, right? I mean, this, this, uh, this, uh, the institution of the Senate, which is wholly undemocratic, and yeah. this Electoral College, wholly undemocratic. Um, and, and then uh, the, I guess, the, um, uh, the, 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 the fruit from the poison seed, I guess, is uh, the Supreme Court and, to a certain extent, the, um, the congressional redistricting. Um, it's rigged for people who benefit from the frustration of majority rule, and that uh, in a um, market capitalist society is going to be overwhelmingly the rich and the powerful. Uh, so <clears throat> people with private economic power benefit from a system that is rigged against majority rule, that is uh, rigged against um, uh, the have-nots or relative have-nots against those that, that have. You know, it, 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 I, I don't think democracy and capitalism are incompatible at all, but if you don't have any democracy, to, uh, true democracy, true one-person, one-vote, majority-rule democracy, uh, to put up against capitalism, uh, you, you get um, it, it, it becomes more and more skewed towards outrageous amounts of inequality, not just in income, but in power. And that's what's been happening in the United States. Um, uh, it, so, anyway. Well, I mean, it's sort of amazing when you contemplate the idea of how sacrosanct money is treated as a form of speech, uh, whereas our votes are just um, uh, not quite... <laughs> As yeah. sacrosanct, I mean, both in terms of, of suppression. I mean, Lawrence Lessig was talking about, uh, uh, you know, some time ago, raising a, uh, trying to sue uh, based on that notion that came out of uh, Bush v. Gore about the equal protection for the voters in terms of one person's vote being uh, valued as much as another. That's why, theoretically, the Supreme Court of the United States ended the recount, right? It would be unfair to have some people's votes recounted and not others. Meanwhile, uh, three million people in California's votes are worth, you know, uh, what uh, uh, 200 people's votes are worth in Wyoming or something. Well, Sam, here's the tragedy, if I may comment on that. You know, had uh, Hillary Clinton been elected uh, and had Merrick Garland gone on to the Supreme Court, uh, there are at least two things that would have happened. Number one, the court, which uh, might even now, uh, with Kennedy uh, on the court as a swing vote, 
uh, find gerrymandering unconstitutional. And that would uh, really free up the people's house, the lower house, to be the people's house again. Um, and the second thing is that they would have rolled back for sure um, not just Citizens United, but the far more pernicious case back in 1974 of Buckley versus Vallejo, Vallejo where, where um, uh, the Supreme Court majority found that money was a form of speech, which is exactly what just drove Justice Thurgood Marshall nuts. You know, the notion that money was speech. He, uh, poor Justice Marshall could never get over that. And that, I think, I not only think, I, I've got a confidence factor of like 98% that had she been elected... That notion of money being speech would have been turned back by a new five to four Supreme Court and that campaign finance reform that would have been enacted after that date, whether immediately in Hillary Clinton's first term or later, would therefore be a constitutional, whereas now it's often struck down by the Supreme Court. That's just part of the strategy. We lost a golden opportunity to transform this system, um, <clears throat> even in the face of what would have probably been gridlocked between the presidency and the Congress. The court wouldn't have been gridlocked, and there would have been really major changes in the country. It's so tragic. It's, um, it's horribly tragic. Hey, it's Sam Cedar. Why don't you uh, subscribe to this channel? You can do so right, uh, right over here. Over. Subscribe.